My great-great-grandfather, Anthony Crawford, had an altercation at a store with a white storekeeper about the price of his cotton seed. Grandpa refused to do business with him and was arrested, and then um, was lynched in a spectacle, ritualistic killing at the town square in Abbeville, South Carolina, 100 years ago. A lot of people don't talk about the lynchings in their family, and some of us do. For those of us who do, we represent a whole slew of people who are so traumatized that they can't speak, that their relatives did not pass down this history to them. So the Crawfords have always felt, I think, an obligation to speak up for Grandpa Crawford. We were all socialized that way. No more of this. This violence must cease. No more of this. No more hanging. No more of this. Terrorizing the black community. White mobs lynched more than 4,000 black people. 4,000 black people. 4,000 black people in the South between 1877 and 1950. And more than 180 of them were killed in South Carolina. As you witness the bringing of these vessels of soil for holy consecration, May you declare yourself a repairer of the breach, an instrument of reparatory justice that declares never again we are standing on holy ground. It was moving to stick our hands in that dirt and, and to look at actual soil that holds many family, too many people's DNA, I think is a powerful, way of symbolizing the history of lynching in the United States. And if we start telling the truth about our history, we could actually change the climate for freedom in this country. I don't think slavery ended in 1865. I think it just evolved. It turned into decades of terrorism. We're here today because there was terror in this region. Black people were pulled out of their homes, they were burned alive, they were murdered, they were hung, they were beat, they were shot. And that terror has to be acknowledged. Exactly. Yes. This landscape is littered with the iconography of the Confederacy. It is a false story, it is an incomplete story. We're changing that today. And we have to change it because something important happened here. A hundred years ago, a man named Anthony Crawford, a strong man, a faithful man, but because he insisted on fairness, a lot of people didn't like that he was doing well. So they didn't like that he could sell food and cotton to, to white merchants. And one day when he was being confronted by someone who wanted to buy his product for less than was fair, they actually arrested him. Because they couldn't allow a proud, strong, prosperous black man to stand up for fairness. And that wasn't enough, a mob of 300 people came to the jail to pull him out. A trial wasn't going to be good enough. And they took this man out of the jail and they actually dragged his body through this community. And then they took him to a spot and they weren't content to just beat him. They weren't content to just hang him. They shot his body 200 times. When the family, the grieving family whose descendants are here today just wanted to reclaim their grandfather, the people in control said, no, we're gonna let that body hang there for a few days, just as a statement to all the black people in this region. And that family had to flee, and it was an injury. It was a burden, it was an assault. And today we are here to give voice to that hardship, but more than that, we are here to give witness to the importance of what can happen when we come together and say, I'm here. Sometimes the most powerful thing we can do to be truth tellers, to be witnesses for justice, is to gather in a place like this and say, I'm here. This marker is a story about hardship. 
is a story about bruising and cutting and suffering. But when we get together, when we say we are here, when we join together in truth telling, we turn those cuts, those bruises, those scars into medals of honor. This is the most honorable place in Abbeville, South Carolina. We are here. We are here. We were banished. We were ordered out of town. To stand there when everybody was gathered and I could look out in that crowd and think about how many people got in their cars, how many people got on airplanes. To stand at that moment with the Crawford family as we pulled the cover off of history. America is a place where symbols are important, where markers are important. And that's a beautiful thing. When you read that text on that marker, it's the truth. And so where he died in an extra legal murder, we have come back with um, an answer to that that's permanent. That's a permanent marker. If you go do business in City Hall, if you go do business at the courthouse, you walk right past Anthony Crawford. And he's looking back at you. 